Last night I got home and found this parcel at my doorstep. In it was a QRP rig, the OzQRP MDT, 7 MHz double sideband QRP transceiver. The kit is from the same stable as the MST series, which I reviewed a couple of years ago. The MST was an SSB transceiver controlled by a DDS VFO. It was also quite large and, as a short form kit, required you to hunt around for various parts to complete it. That made it more suitable to the advanced kit constructor. To cater for a beginner with less experience, OzQRP has brought out the MDT. It's a complete kit. All items, including the box, are supplied. And, being double sideband, it's a lot simpler. Instead of a DDS VFO, it's controlled by a ceramic resonator. That allows it to cover about 80 kHz of the band. Also, it's a lot smaller, which could make it more suitable for backpack portable operating. Power output of the MDT is about 2 watts. If you think that's too low, we'll give the radio an on-air test later in the video. The MDT is an intermediate level kit. I still wouldn't recommend it as a first kit, but if you've built a couple of simple kits, like those Pixie QRP rigs, then you can tackle the MDT with confidence. This video is purely an operator review. I didn't build this kit. OzQRP sent it to me already built up, so I can't comment on how it went together. However, I can comment on its circuitry and how it works, as you'll hear later in the video. Last night, down on 80 metres on the bottle shop net there for about an hour. So I went inside, I just couldn't sit here any longer. It was that cold. I think it was around about 8 degrees. Having a look inside the MDT, the microphone socket, tuning control, volume control, headphone socket, and LED TX indicator, antenna socket, and power connection on the back. This is the ceramic resonator, the Veracta diode, and the ceramic resonator oscillator, covering a VXO tuning range around 7.1 MHz. Here's the balance modulator. You can see the four diodes and the balance potentiometer. The receive audio stages. Here's the audio preamp and audio filter, and then the LM386 audio amplifier. These two transistors are the microphone amplifier, while this transistor here is the BD139 driver. That feeds two BD139s, which is the RF final amplifier. This is the transmit receive relay, and here is the low pass filter, which suppresses the harmonics. That's pretty much all there is to it. A basic double sideband direct conversion transceiver with no frequency conversions apart from audio to the transmitted frequency. The circuit board is good quality, with three plated holes and all the components marked on the board. Because both the controls and the sockets are mounted on the main circuit board, there's very little extra wiring once you've populated the board. The exception are the connections to the microphone socket. Here, the twisted wires, and it seems to work okay but if you've got it, I would suggest using shielded audio lead for the microphone connections. These two pins near the ceramic resonator and the Veracta diode are shorted if you want to cover the lower frequency range from 7050 to 7110. Or for 7090 to 7130, you leave them open. They're just behind the front panel, so if you wanted to, you could add a switch to allow selection without opening up the rig. One thing I would suggest, if there's ever a Mark II version of this rig, is to have the tuning control a little bit to the right, to allow a little bit more room on the panel for that switch without it getting in the way. A size comparison with the Yaesu FT817. The front panel is a similar size, except the MDT is slightly higher. The major difference is the depth, with the MDT 
being just over half the depth of the 817. A handy item to buy if you do go portable QRP and every gram is important are these portable scales. You can get them for around $10 from eBay. With the hook you can place the item you weigh in the bag and get a reasonably accurate measurement. This is the FT817 without internal batteries which is around 900 grams. In contrast the MDT is around four times lighter which could make a decisive difference when operating portable. Just testing the selectivity of the Beach 40. What you see here is a mobile phone app called Frequency which is basically an audio spectrum analyzer. There's a convenient carrier which is helpful. It drops off greatly below 300 hertz. There's a bit of a drop off in the middle of the audio range. Around 1.5 kilohertz which isn't so good. And there's a peak. And the drop off is above 5 kilohertz, which is a little bit broad. This is the audio of the MDT. Most noticeable is its better audio selectivity due to the additional audio filter. At 5 kilohertz, it's around 10 dB down compared with 3 kilohertz. And up at 7 or 8 kilohertz, it's 20 to 30 dB down. The tuning covers 60 kHz with three quarters turn of the dial. That will make it a bit more fiddly than a commercial rig, but with a bit of practice, you'll soon master it. So this morning, when I picked up that this piece was missing, um, he gave us a piece of tube, which is a long piece of tube, uh, which just needs to be cut the length. So. I just wonder, anyone else would like to join us? This is VK3 RAN standby. VK3 ZD. Another time, remind me. About uh, the. Oh, I um. This is the MDT with an external speaker. As you can hear, the volume is adequate and fills a small room. CQ, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ. You're on 7090 lower sideband now. Yeah, look, uh, VK3 YE, VK3 HRA, that's, uh, that's quite workable given the, uh, what we get up to uh, 40 metres. That's fairly much a workable signal. Yeah, VK3 YE, uh, VK3 HRA. <coughs> this is VK3 Lee Hotel. Uh, Paul in South Gippsland, uh, yeah, sounds pretty good, Peter, no problem at all. You're up to uh, oh, 5 and 7, 5 and 8 and drifted down a little bit, but uh, yeah, great, no problem at all. VK3 Yankee Echo. Yeah, thanks, Sir Paul. Good afternoon to you. You are 5 by 7. 5 by 7, just running 2 watts double sideband. Over. Roger, uh, Peter. Thanks for the 5 and 7. You are 5 and 5. 55. Perfectly readable signal in the clear. VK3 Yankee Echo, VK3 YE.
antenna I used for all those contacts was a full size dipole for 40 metres with an apex height of about 9 metres. As you heard from all the Readability 5 reports, QRP double sideband is highly viable on 40 metres. It might even be okay as an only rig and especially appealing if you go portable a lot. Overall performance of the MDT was fairly similar to my Beach 40 transceiver, which you've seen previously in my videos. The Beach 40 had a wider tuning range because it used a tuning capacitor rather than a Veractor diode. However, the MDT has a better receiver, mainly because of the audio filter providing better selectivity. Consequently, the MDT is a somewhat nicer radio to use. The MDT costs $75 Australian, which I think is pretty good value for a complete double sideband transceiver kit. I've had a lot of fun using the MDT and can highly recommend it. Thanks to Leon Williams, VK2DOB of OzQRP for the loan of the review transceiver. The hardest part of this review will be sending it back.